Well, now that evening is falling on the town of Greenvale, most of the locations will be closed. Hmm. Uh, actually, over here is Emily's car. Just take a look at that. It's her own car that's been equipped with, uh, with sirens. So there's not too much else for us to do except uh, go back to the hotel and have a nap for tomorrow. But, uh, well, actually, it looks like George is at home. Let's see what George thinks uh, about us not coming by today. I'm sure he'll be happy to hear all about all the stuff we've been doing today. Especially after he didn't want us to actually uh, get to know the town and meet the people. Mm-hmm. Fortunately, George lives close by. We'll reach him in just a few seconds. Here he is. I'm sure he'll just be very excited to hear about the progress we've made on the case today. Don't you? Huh? Oh, come on. George is not the most sociable fellow outside of the office. But okay, he can't stop us from uh, taking a look around his house, though. Let's see what's around. He's got a crate, which of course will smash. Hmm, nothing. And it looks like George uh, left a trading card out here. I'll just pick that up. His own card. Hmm. It doesn't seem like Georgia takes very good care of his house. So, again, really nothing else to do except uh, go back to the mo uh, the hotel. So I guess that's what we'll be doing now. We'll get an early night's sleep, and then wake up tomorrow and head straight over to the police station and just see what, uh, what they have to say, what they've dug up, and compare it with uh, what we've found today. Okay, sir. I've been thinking about what movie I'd like to watch next, and finally I've made a decision. It's always hard to narrow it down just to one movie. But I've put a lot of thought into this, and I'm sure you'll agree with me. 1975. Directed by Steven Spielberg himself. The grandfather of Panic Movies. Set in a small town in Massachusetts. That movie made me stay away from the beach for years. I was always afraid that a hand might come floating up. You know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah. It's Jaws. The underwater camera work accompanied by that John Williams music. I've never been that scared by a movie before. But the best thing about it is that it isn't just another panic movie. The man who won't close the beach even when there are so many victims. She would have put the citizens' lives above all else. The film gave a lot of time to the dispute and friction between them. It certainly had a lot of messages for a two-hour film. It's probably another reason why it was such a record-breaking hit. One of my regrets in life is that I didn't see it at the movie theater. I 
guess I was still just a child back then. Still, I wanted to taste that terror in real time. That reminds me, Zach. Did you know this one? Jaws also appears in another movie that was produced by Spielberg. The second Back to the Future. It was directed by Robert Zemeckis, who later made Forrest Gump. That's also a masterpiece, of course, but we'll discuss that another time. So, the scene where Jaws appears is right after Marty McFly goes 30 years into the future. He passes by a movie theater and is attacked by a holographic shark. Marty is shocked, of course, but looking closer, he sees the words, Jaws Part 19. The director is credited as Steven Spielberg Jr. In reality, there were actually only four Jaws movies. It was still a great joke. 30 years from 1985 would be 2015. It'll be there pretty soon. What would be like by then, Zach? Well, that's something we'll have to think of another time because we've uh, run out of gas and that's our primary concern. So since uh, we have no gas... something here that you want to check out? We're supposed to go through Anna Graham's file at the sheriff's office, but if you want to act on a hunch, then I'm with you. Since we're out of gas, it means uh, we have no car. And it would mean that we would have to uh, go back to the hotel on foot. That would take some time. Fortunately, we have another option. We picked up a flare when we got this car. So a flare can summon another police car. It'll be delivered to us. So always keep a flare back to, uh, always keep a flare as backup when you're out driving because you don't know if you might need one. Let's just have a look at the map because uh, I did get a little bit confused as we were driving around and uh, wait a moment. Where's York's hands? Where's his body? Agent York, what happened? Where are you, Agent York? There's no one driving the car. Oh dear. Why can't I hear the car either? I don't, and the sirens are not making any noise either. Zach, we can take a rest of your time. It's not really what I'm thinking about. I'm thinking about why you're invisible. I've never actually seen this before, so I don't know what actually what's happening and whoa, wh wait. What's happened to the map? Greenville's disappearing. Oh wait, okay. I think it's I think the map is back. Yeah, okay. That's that's better. Maybe York will be back as well. No, he's still invisible. I really don't know what, what this is. Whoa. I hope uh York reappears when he gets out of the car. I don't I don't know why he's invisible. Things are flashing. In any case, uh, what I wanted to bring up before uh, York turned invisible was that it, it can easily happen that you kind. Of, what's with the flashing? It can easily happen that you can get a uh, kind of lost driving around Greenvale, and the map is not that much of a help. It's kind of difficult to navigate using the map, so it is better to have a an external map, perhaps one that you've gotten online. Yep, no noise, no sirens. It is better to have a, a map on your computer that you can reference to, uh, reference to when you are uh, driving around in Greenvale since uh, the in-game map is difficult to use since you can't really zoom out so you can't see too much of the map at once. Mm-hmm. So we'll just drive 
back to the hotel and see if uh, Agent York becomes visible again when we leave the car. Oh, you're back. Okay, so I don't I don't know why that happened, but uh it looks like it's fixed now, I guess. All right. As far as I know, there's nothing special about a car you get with a flare. It should be the same as any other car. And here we are back at the hotel where we started, and Polly is still standing there. For hours, days, weeks, years, Polly stands there alone, in silent vigil, waiting for someone to come to her hotel to rent a room, or perhaps buy a fishing pole and bait. No one to talk to, no one to be with, this is Polly's life, standing as a solitary guard of the Great Deer Yard Hotel. Since we used our flare, uh, we should buy some new ones, since, uh, as I said, you never know when they'll come in handy. Uh, really nothing else that she has right now that we need. So all, all we can do right now is just go to bed, get up tomorrow, and head over to the police station and see what George and Emily have in store. Before that, let's call in to FBI headquarters and let them know what's going on. Since it's, uh, I think it was 7 p.m., <sighs> we'll just sleep for as long as possible. Right, it's uh 7:16. We'll go for the long sleep and wake up 7:16 in, in the uh, in the morning, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>